get some more analysis on this now from Salman Al Ansari, a Saudi political commentator based in Riyadh. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us. So this is a historic milestone, isn't it? What kind of diplomatic manoeuvring has had to go on to make it happen? Yeah, thank you so much, Jamie. <clears throat> it's actually true. Like appointing a Saudi ambassador to, to Palestine is a historic step, with no doubt. Um, however, some in the media said it's the first time. But you guys have actually made it right and said it's in reality the Saudis used to have an envoy to Palestine uh, before the Israeli occupation of Jerusalem in, in 1967. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has consist consistently uh, uh, considered the Palestinian issue to be in the top of its priorities. The kingdom has always been in uh, as the biggest donors of Palestine. Just from the year 2000, the kingdom provided more than $7 billion uh, in humanitarian and development aid uh, to Palestine. So, yes, definitely, the Palestinian people have been through a lot, and I really mean it, a lot. The era of colonialism is over, except for the Palestinians. They deserve to live in peace and with dignity, and the Saudis have been and will always be uh, committed to their uh, Palestinian brothers and sisters. And I would also want to say that it would be a wishful thinking by the Israelis to think that the Saudis will somehow throw the Palestinian brothers uh, under the bus. The Saudis, as, the Saudis are as much uh, committed for the two-state solution as the Palestinians are. And how significant is the timing of this, do you think? Yeah, it is actually very significant because we can see, like, through the words of the Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman at his interview with Fox News, he talked about, like, we are getting closer uh, day by day with regards to normalization with Israel. But that does not come at the account and, uh, and, uh, of, of the Palestinians. So definitely, I think the Saudis have shifted from their approach of let's wait and see approach to let's see and act approach. So they have, they're kind of using these kind of tactics because the mean are different, but the end is always constant with Saudi Arabia. The mean is to change the course of the way you can actually achieve a deal with the Israelis. And the end is always to have the Palestinians to have their own independence. So the constant, it's very constant for the Saudis to have the Palestinians to have their uh, absolute right. And as you said, like I think the world is changing dramatically right now. The Middle East is definitely not, no different. Cool-headed people should lead the change. And they must uh, leave behind all the ideologies and, and turn their backs to, to the noise uh, that is made by radicals. Uh, at the same time, they must take uh, courageous tips that can guide the, the, the Middle East and the world uh, towards cooperation and competition in development rather than in warfare and bloodshed. So I'm actually optimistic. I'm actually very optimistic with regards to uh, things that are on the way. And let's hope and see how things will turn with regards to the big deal. But with regard to the Saudi-Palestinian relationship, it is constant and it will always be there. Mm -hmm. So perhaps we are moving into a new era. What is at stake for Saudi Arabia? And uh, Mahmoud Abbas has outlined demands to Saudi Arabia in exchange for his support for normalization. Uh, how likely are these concessions? I don't actually know. I think with regards to the U.S., I think the U.S., um, like the requests that have been made to the U.S. itself, have somehow been uh, signaled that it will happen with regards to the security partnership and the guarantees, etc., and plus the nuclear enrichment and nuclear cooperation with Saudi Arabia. But with regards to the Israeli part, I'm not very sure, specifically while we are having a very radical uh, coalition by uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu. He has, uh, President or Prime Minister Netanyahu has talked about, uh, about this in the media, and he was trying to sideline his coalition, and as if he is like the one who uh, calls the shots. But we have to wait and see if that's actually uh, true. And I also can understand that there is a level of confusion right now among journalists regarding what's going on. Uh, a Saudi ambassador arrival uh, in Palestine and simultaneously an Israeli minister uh, arrival in, in, in Saudi Arabia. Here's how I see it. The Saudis wanted to change the mean and not the end, as I said earlier. The mean is through active engagement and to have some tactics through which you can actually show that you are very uh, serious on building a uh, trust uh, mechanism, uh, trust building mechanisms. And, and, and the end, as I said, it's constant. The Palestinians should have their own rights. And I think the Saudis are actually doing uh, or practicing real politique with that regard. So let's wait and see. And let's also aim and hope, and I'm not actually exaggerating to say that, 
let's also aim that to see the Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman one day to to pray at the at the Al Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem, and that can only happen if we have complete normalization and we have complete uh, 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 solution and resolution for the Palestinian issue. And I think the Saudis are serious about it. I believe that the Americans are serious about it. But let's wait and see if the, if the Israelis are. Okay, let's wait and see. Salman Al-Ansari, great to get your thoughts today. Many thanks indeed. Thank you.